All right, boys, before we get in today's video, I just want to take a second to tell you about our sponsor. Xer is known for inventing the first trackable wallet. It's super slick, boys. Only half the size of my old one. And if you lose it, it's really as simple as just pulling out your phone. This thing can hold up to 12 cards, guys, and also has a money clip, which I personally use a ton. But if this design's not enough to sell you, just listen to this, boys. This wallet is completely solar powered and two hours in the sun will keep you charged for three months. Here's the tracker card right here, man. You just simply slide it into your wallet like so. I personally have the Parliament wallet. This thing comes in six different colors. This is the color that I chose. And I just think it's nice, man. It's a really good design, really professional looking. It has a really nice pop-up mechanism for your cards. Fellas, if you want a little peace of mind, a little extra security, definitely go over to extra.com. Go check out these wallets, man. Get you one, you can get 30% off with code the Octobers. And thank you so much for sending the wallet, guys. Let's go. All right, guys, so we didn't kill Bill, so we are back with volume two, baby. Tell him the weird thing about the last movie. Okay, so we purchased it on Amazon, and the subtitles for the English were correct, but for some reason, the Japanese subtitles, they just didn't show up, so. They weren't in the movie. Like, that version didn't have the subtitles. At all, so yeah. We did go and rewatch everything, just so you guys know. But just so you know, man, we did have a lot of fun with that, and it was just interesting to get that feedback. So we were back with volume two. And I'm, I'm really excited about it, man. We have I some really... people on the list still to get. Two or three, we have right? Bud, L Driver, and Bill. And Bill, that's right. If she finishes off these dudes in any type of fashion the way that she did in the first movie, uh, it's going to be crazy because that one was genuinely like, it's just something you got to see once in your life. I'm pretty shocked that I made it this far without seeing it, but I know. Really <laughs> crazy movie. I was so into it, so I'm expecting more of the same. I'm really hoping that the second half of this movie can just hit the same way the first one did because so many projects in life just don't quite wrap up as perfectly as they start but i'm really hoping for something different like comment subscribe if you guys are new here if you guys want to join the channel we are on patreon also we and we're doing these. all the tarantinos yeah we're knocking out those there's nine of them we're on the oh there's one. only nine yeah uh, you know i thought there'd be more because we started out so long ago watching these movies. I know. But I guess Tarantino really puts his time. He doesn't make filler movies. And so maybe that's the case. Maybe he just took a break. Let us know. But <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Only nine. Yep. Well, we're getting through them. This is what we're like halfway. Four? Yeah, almost halfway. Dang. Well, it took me like two or three movies to really understand Quentin Tarantino as a director. But mm -hmm. now I feel like I'm totally on the same page as you, dude. And I can really appreciate your movies to the fullest. So let's go. Let's go. sadistic. I'd like to believe you're aware enough, even now, to know that there's nothing sadistic in my actions. Oh, yeah. This is me and my most masochistic. Well, it's your baby. Brought me right back to it. Looked dead, didn't I? Well, I wasn't. But it wasn't from lack of trying, I can tell you that. Actually, Bill's last bullet put me in a coma. A coma I was to lie in for four years. When I woke up, I went on what the movie advertisements refer to as a roaring rampage of revenge. <laughs> I roared. I've killed a hell of a lot of people to get to this point. But I have only one more. The last one. The one I'm driving to right now. I am gonna kill Bill. That's tough. So this was obviously in the middle because she has to kill the other two first. Absolutely. So she's at least almost there. What if Bill kills her? She better not. Bruh. I mean, he better not. Massacre at Two Pines. That's what the newspapers called it. The local TV news called it the El Paso, Texas Wedding Chapel Massacre. How it happened? Who was there? changes depending on who's telling the story. The massacre didn't happen during a wedding at all. Mm. It was a wedding rehearsal. Mm. Now, when we come to the part where I say you may kiss the bride, you may kiss the bride, but don't stick your tongue in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's who she's marrying? <laughs> we'll try What's wrong with him? <laughs> he looks like he's like, whatever you say to you. Y'all got a song? Fibular. How about Love Me Tender? I can play that. Let me tender be great. Rufus, he's the man. <laughs> Who was that you used to play for? Rufus Thomas. I was a drill, I was a drifter, I was a coaster, I was part of the gang, I was a bar cake. 
Rufus, he's the man. Those references went like this to me. Over your head, yeah. yeah. We have the bride's side, and then we have the groom's side. But since the bride ain't got nobody coming, and the groom has got far too many people coming. Well, yeah, they're coming all the way from Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't see no problem with the groom's side sharing the bride's side. Do no. you, Mother? No, I don't have a problem with that. Honey, you know, it would be good if you had somebody come. Well, I don't have anybody. I'm like an assassin. Except for Tommy and my friends. You have no family? Well, I'm working on changing that. Mrs. Harmony, we're all the family this little angel's ever gonna need. I'm not feeling very well, and this bitch is starting to piss me off. <laughs> so while you all blather on, I'm gonna go outside and get some air. She just needs a few minutes to get it together. She'll be okay. <laughs> What do you think about that gang right there? You like them? <laughs> Would that stress you out if you was in there? <laughs> All alone in the middle of the desert. I wonder why they choose black and white for this moment. The show us in the past? I don't know. I was about to say, was that Bill? Was he playing an instrument? <laughs> I guess. That ain't one How that I play. Find me? I'm the man. What are you doing here? A moment ago, I was playing my flute. Yeah, just a little flute. Well, why can't we hear it? At this moment, I'm looking at the most beautiful bride these old eyes have ever seen. Why are you here? Last look. Are you going to be nice? I've never been nice my whole life, but I'll do my best to be sweet. <laughs> your sweet side is your best side. You're the only one who's ever seen it. See, so you got a bun in the oven. I'm knocked up. Have you seen Tommy? Big guy in the tux? Yes. And I saw him. I like his hair. <laughs> <laughs> you promised you'd be nice. No, I said I'd do my best. That's hardly a promise. What does your young man do for a living? He owns a used record store here in El Paso. Man, I know it's coming, so this is stressing me out. And what are you doing for a J-O-B these days? I work in the record store. Do you like it? Yeah, I like it a lot, smartass. I can't tell if they like or hate each other. It's gonna be a great environment for my little girl to grow up in. As opposed to jetting around the world, killing human beings, and being paid vast sums of money. Precisely. Well, my old friend, to each his own. Oh, fuckery aside, I am looking forward. He said banter <laughs> in the subtitles. <laughs> I happen to be more or less particular who my gal marries. You want to come to the wedding? Only if I can sit on the bride's side. Your side always was a bit lonely. Mm. But I was why you picked her, probably. You must be Tommy. Uh huh. Arlene's told me so much about you. Tommy, I'd like you to meet my father. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh my god this is great i'm so glad to meet you sir oh dad the name's bill well it's great mm. to meet you uh, arlene told me you couldn't make it surprise that's my pop for you <laughs> always full of surprises i've heard of uh, wedding rehearsals but i don't believe i've ever heard of a wedding dress rehearsal before well i pay so much money for a dress you're only gonna wear once <laughs> so uh I think we're gonna try to get all the mileage we can out of it isn't it supposed to be Fair bad enough. luck for the groom to see the bride in her wedding dress before the ceremony? I don't believe in luck, sir. I guess I just believe in living dangerously. <laughs> oh my God, what am I thinking? You should give her away! Tommy, that's not exactly Daddy's cup of tea. That's asking a lot. Okay, well forget it. But how about we go out to dinner tonight and celebrate? Only on the condition that I pay for everything. Deal. We gotta do this. Okay, now. then yeah, let's go. Watch. Which is the bride's side? Right over here. Dang, so he's about to watch them rehearse so he knows exactly right, how to shoot them. Huh? That's, that's crazy. I don't know about Bill, y'all. Kind of stressing me out. Bill, I just don't want You don't owe me a damn thing. If he's the man you want, go stand by him. The, what? You asked what their relationship was like, and I didn't answer you because I'd imagine it's so complicated that I don't want to stop the movie. 
We'd have to break that down. I know what it's going to be like. Me too. I feel like, where are you from again? <laughs> what's, what state do you, what state <laughs> you come from? <laughs> he, he wasn't even paying attention. You would at least think the preacher would be objecting a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> at least like... <laughs> The Viper Gang, isn't it? What's it called? Deadly Viper Gang. What the hell? It's your baby. Man, I thought for sure there was going to be one last gunshot. That's why I said it's your baby. I mm -hmm. thought she was going to say that and there was going to be one more. Isn't that crazy? We saw it from that point of view. Yeah, that's insane. You telling me she cut her way through eighty-eight bodyguards? No, that wasn't. Is that really Billy Ray Cyrus? Mm -hmm. They just <laughs> called themselves the crazy eighty-eight. I was about to say Trevor from GTA. They all fell under her Hanzo sword. She got a Hanzo sword? Didn't he swear a blood oath to never make another sword? It would appear he has broken it. Them Japs sure know how to hold the grudge, don't they? Or maybe you just tend to bring that out in people. <laughs> I know this is a ridiculous question, but you haven't by any chance kept up with your swordplay. I pawned that years ago. You hawked a Hattori Hanzo sword. <laughs> How much did you get for it? It was priceless. It looks like nothing, like, because he don't have... <laughs> <laughs> Not in El Paso, it ain't. In El Paso, I got me $250 for it. <laughs> Hard I'm times. I'm a kitty bar, Bill. I know we haven't spoken in some time, but you've got to get over being mad at me and start becoming afraid of me because she is coming. Well, I know it's not Arlene. What's her name? Take a guess. What do you think it's going to be? Can we rewind that? Why? So I can see what his lips look like. Mm -mm. <laughs> that woman deserves her revenge and we deserve to die. You kind of look like Paul Rudd. <laughs> So does she. My, my club. The Lonely Grave of Paula Schultz. He would be stylish in today's times. Yeah, he would be. Late again. But can't you tell time? There ain't nobody in here, man. Is that fun? Yeah. Bud? Larry'd like to word with you. <laughs> Larry. Yeah. You looking for me? I don't know what the car was. You worked before you came here. They let you stroll in 20 minutes late, but it wasn't owned by me, and I own a f***ing car wash. Do you want me to leave? <laughs> there ain't nobody out there. It's the principal, bud. What's your plan? That you're not needed here? That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> I'm the bouncer, and there ain't nobody out there to bounce. You're saying that the reason that you're not doing the job that I'm paying you to do is that you don't have a job to do what are you trying to convince me of exactly that you're as useless as an asshole right here an eyeball <laughs> yes my buddy let's go to the calendar you must really need that job time. huh mm -hmm. okay you working tomorrow you don't even know what f day you work here you're not working tomorrow you're working wednesday here well maybe he has a point though maybe he sucks and i mean Thursday? you just did cocaine yeah, <laughs> don't want me to come in here <laughs> friday I mean, you can coke and joke. I don't. There's your name. <laughs> Saturday. They used to be your name. Oh, um, there you go. <laughs> yeah. How about that? How about that? I want you to go home till I call you. Before you leave, talk to Rocket. She's got a job for you to do. <laughs> what? That. 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 <laughs> how many times have I told you? Don't wear that f out of here. <laughs> <laughs> He would just look like a bowler if he didn't have that hat. I'm not the boss of the customers. I'm the boss of you. And I'm telling you that I want you to keep that shit kicker hat at home. <laughs> he does look like he's in a bowling league, don't he? Yeah. The hat made him look a little more like cowboy who plays bowling leagues on Wednesdays or something. Did you see all the signs? It's like, don't do this or you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but honey, uh, the toilet is at it again. I'll clean it up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dang. 
So he gets treated terribly there. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a secret mission he had to go on, but... Nah, he's literally about to go clean up the bathroom. I know. So he's a bouncing janitor. But when she, when he said Rocket has something for you to do, I was like, Rocket? Okay. That girl like, was Rocket. Yeah, it sounded like an official name. I don't know. What's he thinking right now? He's thinking he's hear something. That man has terrible ventilation in that thing. If I had his money, that it's so hard to find to man in ten. That man knows that sound, don't he? <laughs> Once I was winning to get a start in life's game. But I'm richer than <laughs> Man, she could have got him right there. <laughs> he just puts it back on. <laughs> that was just like Pulp Fiction when he came out the bathroom. <laughs> he was kind of slick for that. But is she dead? She said she killed him. Some, didn't it? Oh, she must just hit him with the. Don't tell me he's got salt in that. How dare you just kick that fancy sword? Ain't nobody a badass with a double dose of rock salt. Right. Because that would have blew her. Well, I can't even say that on YouTube, but. I can't even imagine how bad that shit must stink. <laughs> oh, so it's like. I don't really know how that works, yeah. but. What? Whatever bullet he had. So you can like, for example, say you wanted to hunt something, something small. Why would you, if you hit it with a shotgun shell, it's going to explode. It's going to go. There's going to be shotgun um, shells all in it. So you hit it with salt because, you know, salt among other reasons. But yeah, I didn't know that. Is that what's on her face is salt? Ooh. That was unnecessary. Uh, Ooh. Uh, she always getting injected with right. something. How does she? What the heck? I'm kind of confused. Yeah, like how is she gonna get out of this to kill Bill? Yeah, like if I was him, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be playing no games with her. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't take that for what you will. This man's over here using the rock, the rock salt shells. Oh yeah, he knew she was coming because Bill done warned him. Mm -hmm. Bill, wrong brother. You hateful. <laughs> but. I just caught me the cowgirl. Ain't never been caught. I shot her full of rock salt. Guess what I'm holding in my hand right now? A brand spanking new Atari Hanzo sword. How much? Well, that's hard to say, being that it's priceless and all. <laughs> you get your bony ass down here first thing in the morning with a million dollars in folding cash. A million? That's it. And I'll give you the greatest sword ever made by a man. Well, if he sold his first one for two fifty, I'd sell the second one for one million two fifty. Sounds like we got a deal. <laughs> I'd get my money. She must suffer to her last breath. I can pretty much damn well guarantee. Then I'll see you in the morning, millionaire. Oh, you a millionaire? You know, I'd definitely figure out the tax rate, <laughs> and then just add that. I'd be like, yeah, I definitely need one point four million or one point six million. What is he about to do to her? I don't know. There's really no telling. Honestly, after Pulp Fiction, man, I don't Who know knows, what to right? expect. <laughs> wakey, wakey. Eggs and bakey. Bro, my dad would say that growing up. He, he would do it annoying. You think it's because of this movie? I think, I don't know. I've, I've always heard that. <laughs> oh, you heard that too? Yeah. But it could be from this movie. Paula Schultz. That's the name of the chapter. My dad! <laughs> Get me out of this hole! That guy is a little short, ain't he? 
I didn't notice until he pulled that ladder out. Because I'm sitting there thinking, why do you need help getting down? It's only six feet deep. Oh, look at those eyes. This bitch is furious. Hey, what is she, a turtle? <laughs> is she the cutest little blonde you ever saw? <laughs> I've seen better. Dang. But have you, though? <laughs> White women call this the silent treatment. And we let them think we don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this guy? That guy's three and a half foot of hell, ain't he? Hey. Hey. That's a can of mace. You're going underneath the ground tonight. Mm. And that's all there is to it. Alive? I was going to bury you. <laughs> it is. But if you're gonna act like a horse's ass, I'm gonna spray this whole goddamn can right in your eyeballs. Then you're gonna be blind, burning, and buried alive. Now what's it gonna be, sister? His boss better reconsider who he's talking to. Right, or you might be in the That's next grave. Sister. Sheesh. This is for breaking my brother's heart. So this is his way of torturing her till the end. I mean, that would suck, right? That's the ultimate. It's one of them, that's for sure. Yeah, even she don't like it, and she's tough. <laughs> she's tougher than us, so. And it's getting nailed shut. Oh, oh my thing is, how in the heck is she about to get out? You know, because it's not like those movies where she can go to a portal or she has eagles to help right, her. Right, she ain't no Doctor Strange. Right. You know, the thing about Tarantino, man, is you really spend so much time with these characters. That even this damn cowboy that looks like Billy Ray Cyrus. Like, I don't like him, but I've spent a lot of time with him so far. We know he has um, a hard time at work. <laughs> yeah. That guy should try Waffle House. <laughs> Having a flashlight kind of sucks, though. What? False hope? Yeah. This is feeling like a damn Mr. Beast video. You know how he's always burying himself? She's gonna use the flashlight, obviously, right? To get out? Like, how else can you? Man, I don't know. I keep thinking about how in the beginning, you know how she said she didn't have anybody? Maybe somebody will come save her. Maybe she does have someone. I think it's crazy she can hear that. That would be so scary to hear him drive off. <laughs> the cruel tutelage of Pame. I could have said that wrong. Statistically, I probably said that wrong. <laughs> How did we know it was Bill? Bill, the damn bamboo blowing bandit over here. <laughs> Once upon a time in China, head priest of the White Lotus Clan, Pame was mm, walking Pai down a road. When a Shaolin monk appeared on the road. As the monk and the priest crossed paths, Pai Mei gave the monk the slightest of nods. He kind of looks like Charles Muntz. The Charles nod Muntz. was not returned. Now, was it the intention of the Shaolin monk to insult Pai Mei? The motives of the monk remain unknown. What is known were the consequences. <laughs> That's like Nolan when he plays the harmonica. Yeah. <laughs> Our son tells us stories and then plays the harmonica in between. <laughs> to Next emphasize, morning, like, you know. I may appeared at the Shaolin Temple and demanded of the temple's head abbot that he offer Pai Mei his neck to repay the insult. The abbot at first tried to console Pai Mei, only to find Pai Mei was inconsolable. <laughs> <laughs> So began the massacre of the Shaolin Temple and all 60 of the monks inside. Well, damn, that's no laughing matter right there. And so began the legend of Pai Mei's five-point palm exploding heart technique, the deadliest blow in all of martial arts. Wait, what oh, the hell cool. is it? Hold on. It's the five he said a five-point punch so thing. So began five-point palm exploding heart technique. That's a tongue twister. He hits you his fingertips at five different pressure points on your body and then lets you walk away 
But once you've taken five steps, your heart explodes inside your body. Ow. And you fall to the floor. Did he teach you that? No. He teaches no one the five-point palm exploding heart technique. That's Tony Ferguson's coach. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever Pai Mei says, obey. If you flash him, even for an instant, a defiant eye, he'll pluck it out. Ow. And if you throw any American sass his way, he'll snap your back and your neck like they were twigs. Hang on, hang on. he said if you if you give any sass, he's gonna pluck your eye out. That That's one girl's what, yeah. missing an eye because she's got a sassy mouth. That's yeah. crazy. The five L driver. finger palm explosion technique or something like that, heart <laughs> explosion technique. I gotta memorize that, guys. And that will be the story of you. Yes, play it. <laughs> She listens to him because he's playing the music and she loves music. I listen to him because I like the storytelling. What happened to you? Nothing. Get in a fight? Friendly contest. Why did he accept me? Because he's a very, very, very old man. And like all rotten bastards, <laughs> when they become old, they get lonely. <laughs> You're going to have a lot of fun carrying buckets of water up and down. When will I see you again? That's the title of my favorite soul song of the 70s. What? <laughs> when he tells me you're done. Bill's got a personality, huh? Mm-hmm. Now remember, no sarcasm, no backtalk. At least not for the first year or so. Year? You're gonna have to let him warm up to you. He hates Caucasians, despises Americans, and has nothing but contempt for women. So in your case, it might take a little while. Well, thanks for sending me here then. Right. Thanks for being so honest about it. <laughs> <laughs> now let me walk up 600 flights of stairs. I'd want to kill him if he just dropped me off at whatever school this is. The damn temple school. <laughs> the temporal arts. He's about to have some jack calves when this is all said and done. I know, she's already tired. She's walking <laughs> sideways up the stairs. No way, that's so cool. Dang, he hangs out there all day? Pretty cool spot. So it was cracking. This is like a video game right here. What, Mortal Kombat? Watch that one. <laughs><笑><笑><笑> We'll speak Japanese and how I Yes, he is. I am proficient in Tiger Crane style, and I am more than proficient in the exquisite art of the samurai sword. Tiger Crane style. <laughs> I like his eyebrows. Yeah, it'd take you three hours to get ready if you had those eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If we didn't have the subtitles at this point, man, I'd be I, so I wrong. I would have still understood. <laughs> would you? Yeah. Yeah, I would have understood too. I'm just playing, of course. I'm just joking. People on YouTube can't tell when I'm joking. It's quite a damn shame, actually. Because he actually shows his emotions a lot, so it's easy to tell. Like his. I just know that he's very angry. Very angry. And asking questions. And he's got a paintbrush in his head. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> 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 I like, I like his character. 
我已经俾机会，睇佢识咩武功。Did you not watch the first movie？ 我要你用 Falcon 同我鹰爪拳比。Tiger Crane match the Eagle Claw。So this is how she takes out that whole like sixty men. Because she learns from this dude. Yeah, this is her kung fu master. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <笑>你同其他美國女人一樣只識喺餐館點財同埋洗男人錢同你隨時將你手斬落嚟有沒有用如果你唔想我斬嘅喐手啊喐唔到咧係跟住馬英捉雞仔係而家開始 Dang, that was like the opening credits. They don't cut corners there. He even stained that wood before he punched it. <laughs> oh. I was thinking this is about to be useful, but she can't. No, she can't. She couldn't punch her way up from being buried. <laughs> That's how he finishes the sentence. This is like a Razagul training. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she remembers that, that little sassy attitude. Oh, she's even dreaming about it. <laughs> it's the way she's leaning into it. I mean, she's got that hip tucked and everything. Is she having difficulties from lack of experience or a lack of a lack of being able to use her hand? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Punch, 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 right. punch, punch, punch. Dang, she's got just enough room, don't she? Yeah, because it's this far. Yeah. That has to take skill, like, to do that in such tight. Mm mm. Yes. Man, she's smart. There you go. The boot knife. Say so you never know when you're gonna have to shave a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> what did we guess her name was? Uh, Millie. I'm just gonna say Uma. <sighs> nice work. Yeah, that should be a lot easier. What's that made out of? Pine right there? Okay, pine. I could be wrong, but that other one was definitely oak. Ha! Ha! Dang. Ha! Ha! It's probably gonna start dripping in her face. This redemption music though, love it. Oh, the sand's coming through though. Oh, 
Oh, you better get your head through. Oh, she's like the Undertaker. Let's go. She's escaped death twice. Twice. I wonder how long you have to be down there to die. How long do you run out of oxygen? Yeah. Probably not that long. Well, like hours, like four hours, maybe five hours. I feel like if she does kill Bill, she's going to make it worth it. Because all the junk that she's been through, it's got to be at least that bad, right? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> May I have a glass of water, please? <laughs> Chapter nine. They have no idea. Elena. Hang on. I just can't, you know? Look, she's even got the dragon on the front. I know it's just a Thunderbird, <laughs> but you know. A Thunderbird? What makes you say Thunderbird? It's the car, bro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking about the type of bird. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they only come out in the storm. I know they're, they're not really around anymore. They used to be a thing back in the day. <laughs> Don't scratch my damn Thunderbird. <laughs> Come on, sugar. We're going to the bar, getting the Thunderbird. What? Why do you know that? <laughs> Man, because I grew up rough. See that house right there? That's what I grew up in. <laughs> no, ours was a double wide though. Until we moved, we moved when I was in middle school. We had sixty acres and a double wide though. <laughs> That's why I didn't watch TV. You were mowing the acres. Mm -hmm. I was out in the woods. Hold on. Just let me see something real quick. Real quick. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hold on, everybody. I'm finding it hilarious. Why are you telling me to just? No, 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 you know you. I thought you were about to call me out or something. No, we're good. We're good. We're chilling. What? I was making sure I didn't mess up the name of that car. <laughs> okay. I really thought you were talking about the bird, but I, what I was saying is I'm finding it hilarious that we are we watched almost two full movies and we don't know the main character's name. That's good. That's what. And that that's I'm why trying I like to, Tarantino. But that's His what I'm trying to do. So I'm odd. trying to focus on this. But I'm like, dude, I don't even know her name. So when I'm trying to talk about it, have you ever seen a movie where the main character's name, when they would mention it, they'd blur it out? Like when? Never. Never. Tarantino's that's why we different. Man, that's why we didn't think we needed subtitles. Okay. I hope she brought a water to go. Oh, she's right back there. Man, they don't see her? I feel like it'd be very easy to see her. <laughs> I'd be paranoid. I'd be like... I feel like she should strike right now because it's buy one, get one. So that's a Texas funeral. That's crazy. That's a Texas pretty funeral. fucked up way to die. What's the name on the grave she's buried under? Paula Schultz. Can I look at the sword? That's my money right there in that red bag, isn't it? Well then... It's your sword now. I wouldn't turn my back on her. I put Marg. So this is a Hattori Hanzo sword. Bill tells me you once had one of these of your own. <laughs> yeah, once. Yeah, how does this one compare to that? If you're gonna compare a Hanzo sword, you compare it to every other sword ever made wasn't made by a Tori Hanzo. There you go, they're all the same. They're just a Hattori Hanzo sword, that's it. Mm-hmm. He's perfected it. Wrap your lips around that. <laughs> Which are you filled with? What? They say the number one killer of old people is retirement. People got a job to do. Live a little bit longer so they can do it. So now that you're not gonna have to face your enemy no more on the battlefield. Which are you filled with? Relief? Or regret? A little bit of both. I'm sure you do feel a little bit of both. But you feel one more than you feel the other. Which one is it? Regret. I never saw anybody buffalo Bill the way she buffaloed Bill. Bill thought she was so damn smart. And I tried to tell him she was just smart for a blonde. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I check that bag first. There you go. Count it up. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. <laughs> That's why there's a bike for me. Oh, 
Was that a black mamba? I don't know much about snakes, but I would identify it as that, yeah. Bro, is that what kind of magazines you got, brother? Oh, I'm sorry, bud. Is he dead, though? It been a really Hell yeah, he's about to die. He just got bit by a black mamba. Bud, I'd like to introduce my friend. It was. I thought it was. Mamba. I know my snakes black now. Black mamba? But this that's the bride's those. that's the bride's nickname, you know, the black mamba. Fascinating creature, the black mamba. In Africa, the saying goes, in the bush, an elephant can kill you, a leopard can kill you, and a black mamba can kill you. But only with the mamba is death sure. Hence its handle. Death incarnate. Pretty cool, huh? I like her notepad. <laughs> The venom of a black mamba can kill a human being in four hours, if, say, bitten on the ankle or the thumb. A bite to the face or torso can bring death from paralysis within 20 minutes. The amount of venom that can be delivered from a single bite can be gargantuan. You know, I've always liked that word, gargantuan. I so rarely have an opportunity to use it in a sentence. <laughs> The black mamba can deliver as much as 100 to 400 milligrams of venom from a single bite. Right, and that's why I know what a black mamba is. Dang. Let me answer that question you asked earlier more thoroughly. The biggest R I feel is regret. Regret that maybe the greatest warrior I have ever met met her end at the hands of a bushwhacking, <laughs> scrub, <laughs> elky piece of sh like you <laughs> that woman deserved better Aww. yeah but where's the snake though did maybe. he like get bit and close it on it or something or maybe it just likes her no not that it's just like i'm taking this money back bro there's a snake on the loose in there you're tripping but that's her pet snake bill some tragic news. Your brother's dead. She put a black mamba in his camper. Wow. I got her, sweetie. She's dead. You ever start feeling sentimental? Go to Barstow, California. When you get here, walk into a florist and buy a bunch of flowers. Then you take those flowers to Huntington Cemetery. Look for the headstone marked Paula Schultz and lay them on the grave. Because you will be standing Final resting place. Man, she's straight manipulating him. Huh? Kiddo. That's her Monica name. Trosser, Melanie Beatrix. Hardhouse. Here. Beatrix Kiddo. Here. <laughs> Look. Her name's a little different than I thought it'd be. I thought it was gonna be like a satire and it'd just be Uma, because her real name's Uma. You go smoke some pot or something. I'll be there soon. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that toe shot though? <laughs> hold on, this one's for Quentin. Yeah, that was. Hang on, let's let's check these toes. That out. was for QMZ. Hold on, hold on. What what did he see in those toes? They hey, hey, if the second one's bigger than the first one, that means I don't know. Man, my toes <laughs> I don't know what broke. that means. <laughs> I broke my toe like a couple, you know, a couple of weeks ago. I was just able to put it in a shoe for the first time. Today. Maybe you should. Send a picture Good to Quentin. Good for a Quentin Tarantino movie? Yeah, maybe we should send it and ask what to do. Man, I got a raging left toe if you want to see it. Oh. Oh. She got the Hanzo, though. She said, I pull up with the Hanzo. Mm -hmm. bop, bop, bop. Man, I better get up. There's a snake in there. I forgot about him. <laughs> He's so worried about the thing. Well, yeah. I think it ventured out. You think it did? Gross. It? It's probably some dip spit. Yeah, if I was a snake, I wouldn't mess with them chicks either. Oh. Yeah, she knows it. I wish Bro, he's got magazines yeah. everywhere. Jesus. Can y'all take it outside as cleaner out there? Believe it or not. Ooh, that's where you really don't want to be at his house. <laughs> he's got his ass on up in that bowl. I was like, bury me. El Diver. Hey, yeah! 
Did they know not to live there anymore? Hey, look, I was kidding about living in one of those, even though I did live in a double wide for a minute. But for real, though, that does look like my Aunt Kathy's house. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie about that. To my brother Bud, the only man I ever loved. Bell. He didn't sell it. And she doesn't know that, What's huh? That? This man's at 250. Bud's hands of sword. He said he pawned it. L. B. What did you say to Pi May to make him snatch out your eye? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. I called him a miserable old fool. I killed that miserable old fool. Did she really? I poisoned his fish heads. You treacherous dog. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him, to me, the word of an old fool like you is worth less than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I killed your master. And now I'm going to kill you too. With your own sword, no less. The bad guys always talk too much. Mm -hmm. She's going to be dual wielding them Hanzos. Not her. You don't have a future. I forgot she done got her tits blown off, too. Ah! Oh! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Not the Dang. eagle! Uh, that's the eagle hawk! That's the eagle hawk! That's what I'm saying! D Louise. Ah! Uh. Oh. Oh. That snake recognized the real one right there. Yeah, because her name's the Black Mamba, so it was like, Mom. Right, like them dragons on Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. like the Daenerys. Mm -hmm. Man, I just closed the door. I let the snake do his thing. Okay. Yeah, it gets windy out there. It's time. It's bill time, huh? So this was the beginning where she was having that. That's all. Yeah. yeah. She said two down, one to go, baby. <laughs> it's final boss time. You would never guess she's like Loki a samurai. I would. She gives me samurai vibes. What she knows. <laughs> <laughs> Like most men who never knew their father, Bill collected father figures. Esteban was a pimp and a friend of Bill's mother. He ran a brothel in Acuna, Mexico for over 50 years. His army, the Acuna Boys, ran Acuna. He ran the Acuna Boys. Senor Esteban Vajeo? Yes. May I join you? <laughs> he said yes. Only on the condition that you call me Esteban. I speak a little Spanish, if you prefer. No, 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 no. I prefer English. It's my pleasure to be in the company of such a fine gentleman as yourself. I must warn you, young lady, I am susceptible to flattery. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? <laughs> Where's Bill? You must be Beatrix. I can see the attraction. Wait a minute. Hold on. I he has a holder on that? Was only five years old. Yeah, don't ask me. I took him to the movies. He's fancy. A man of leisure, remember? The postman always ring twice with Jungle Fields. And whenever she would appear on the screen, Bill began compulsively to suck his thumb to an obscene amount. <laughs> and I knew from this very moment this boy was a fool for bronze. If we had met when I was back in business, you would have been my number one lady. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear you were driving a truck. My wagon died on me. Oh, I forgot about that thing. What happened to it? <laughs> Maybe it wasn't that popular. <laughs> Bill shot you in the head, no? Yes. I would have been much nicer. I would have just cut your face. Clara! <laughs> oh, he did that to her? Man, she didn't like that, did she? A show off. Where's Bill? <laughs> Where's Bill? Bill is at the Via Cuadro on the road to Salina. No shot. Bill is like a song to me. 
Do you know why I help you? Because he will want me to. <laughs> Now that I don't believe. How is he ever going to see you again? So Bill, like, is in love with her. Yeah, absolutely. Obsessed. Yeah, but, but why did he have her shot, her, though? Yeah. Well, because she was... You think it was just because she was getting married and he was just pissed about it? I guess so. And then when he shot her, didn't she say it's your baby or something like that? Yeah, she was, see. like, about to say that, but she didn't even get to finish it, so he probably didn't even know. There we go. That's not even her style, though. Well, you can always change. <laughs> Yeah, pick that one up, too. Freeze, mommy. Bang, bang. Oh. Is that her daughter? Oh, oh I'm dying. She called her mommy. Fall down, sweetheart. They shot us. That little girl must be really what? brainwashed. Little did quick draw kiddo know that little BB was only playing possum. I'm impervious to bullets, mommy. Hey, get back what? down there. You're oh, yeah. playing possum. Bang bang! Her name's BB for Bang Bang. And he's teaching her to be like a little assassin. Dead, mommy. Oh, oh, BB, you are the best. I was just playing. <laughs> I know. So he took the baby. I guess she. Yeah, I guess she still had it. I told her that you were asleep, but that one day you'd wake up and come back to her. And she asked me, if mommy's been asleep since I was born, then how will she know what I look like? Because mommy's been dreaming of you. Did you dream of me? I dreamed of you. Every single night, baby. This is almost like the first scene where she didn't want to kill her because yeah. of the kid, yeah. But do we want to kill Bill still? Hell yeah, we want to chop Bill up and go fishing with Bill. My, my, what a pretty little girl you are. Tell mommy what you said when I showed you her picture. He said you were the most beautifulest woman I ever saw in the whole white world. Oh. Don't you think mommy has the prettiest hair in the whole wide world? Yes, I do. Matter of fact, it's better than pretty. What's better than pretty? Gorgeous. Very good. Mommy is gorgeous. Mommy's kind of mad at Daddy. Why, Daddy? Were you being a bad Daddy? I'm afraid I was. <laughs> Our little girl learned about life and death the other day. Want to tell Mommy about what happened to Emilio? He's cutting the crust off. I killed him. Emilio was her goldfish. Daddy, Daddy, Emilio's dead. How did he die? And what did you say? I stepped on him. And just how did your foot accidentally find its way into Emilio's fish bowl? And she said, no, no, no. Emilio was on the carpet when I stepped on him. And just how did Emilio get on the carpet? She didn't lie. She said she took Emilio out of his bowl and put him on the carpet. And what was Emilio doing on the carpet? Flapping. And then you stomped on him. Mm -hmm. It's kind of dark, right? I know. She learned that from you, bro. It stopped flapping, didn't he? She told me later that the second she lifted up her foot and saw Emilio not flapping, she knew what she had done. Is that not the perfect visual image of life and death? A fish flapping on the carpet and a fish not flapping on the carpet. You about to be not flapping. You loved Emilio, didn't you? Uh-huh. I love Mommy, too. But I did to Mommy what you did to Emilio. You stomped on Mommy? I shot Mommy. Not pretend Whoa. shooting like we were just doing. Why? Do you want to see what happened? No, I knew what would happen to Mommy if I shot her. What I didn't know was when I shot Mommy, what would happen to me. I was very sad. And that's when I learned some things, once you do, they can never be undone. I'd be so confused if I was her. But do you think he was blunt with her? Because he thinks he might die. Yes, that way she understands sick. when she grows up why he's dead, maybe. That's why I haven't been with you, baby. I've been asleep. Would you like mommy to watch a video with you before sleepy time? Which one do you want to watch? Shogun Assassin. No, baby. Shogun Assassin is too long. Mm -mm. We shouldn't be watching Shogun Assassin. No, it's not. Oh, never mind. <laughs> it's cool. I'll leave you ladies to it. 
That's why Emilio's flapping and we're stepping. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. My oh, father would it. come home to mother. He would forget about the killings. He wasn't scared of the shogun. Aww. But isn't this whole scene very uncomfortable? Them being in the same house together? If I was... I was not expecting If I this. was Bill, I would be leaving the country right now. If I was Bill, I'd have waited until she turned around and I'd have stabbed her. Right? I wouldn't try to be mean. I mean, unless he, like, is accepting it because he knows he what knows he that did. She yeah, he deserves it. Yeah. I said BB for Bang Bang, but it could have been Beatrix and Bill. Hmm. Oh, she's leaving the necklace in case she dies. I guess they're about to have a custody battle, huh? <laughs> a for Crazy. real one. And he's actually got a chance. Why should I, care? I was just admiring your sword. A piece of work. Oh, it's Hanzo san. He's good. Has his sushi gotten any better? <laughs> no, I couldn't believe it. You got him to make you a sword. It was easy. I just dropped your name, Bill. Man, you better grab that sword. What is she doing? I suppose the idea is we cross Hanzo swords. It just so happens this hacienda has its own private beach. And that private beach just so happens to look particularly beautiful. So, sword fighter, if you want a sword fight, that's where I suggest. Me too. Nah, could you practice there? Nah, she's the best. Now, if you don't settle down, I'm going to have to put one in your kneecap. <laughs> when it comes to you and us, I have a few unanswered questions. So, before this tale of bloody revenge reaches its climax, I'm going to ask you some questions. <laughs> However, therein lies a dilemma. Because when it comes to the subject of me, I believe you are truly and utterly incapable of telling the truth, especially to me. And when it comes to the subject of me, I am truly and utterly incapable of believing anything you say. <laughs> it just so happens I have a solution. Ah! Gotcha. <laughs> what the heck, dude? Oh, it was a dart. What the I thought he caught it in his <laughs> stomach. Just shoot me with some truth my sound? greatest invention or at least my favorite what, the? what lies within that dart is an incredibly potent and quite infallible truth serum <laughs> dang true serum is that even a real thing true serum that's not real right he's made it up for tv yeah so why don't we use it i'm quite keen on comic books i find the whole mythology surrounding superheroes fascinating <laughs> take my favorite superhero, Superman. Dang, that's the one we haven't watched yet. I know. The mythology is not only great, it's unique. A staple of the superhero mythology is there's the superhero and there's the alter ego. Batman is actually Bruce Wayne. Spider-Man is actually Peter Parker. When that character wakes up in the morning, he's Peter Parker. He has to put on a costume to become Spider-Man. And it is in that characteristic that Superman stands alone. Because he's always Superman. Superman was born Superman. He's from a different planet, right? I th oh, yeah. I was like, I thought he had a name. Yeah, Clark Kent. His outfit with the big red S. That's the blanket he was wrapped in as a baby when the Kents found him. Mm. What Kent wears, the glasses, the business suit, that's the costume. Clark Kent is Superman's critique on the whole human race. Damn, I never thought about it like that. I never even or thought like about that. Beatrix Kiddo and Mrs. Tommy Plimpton. The point emerges. You would have worn the costume of Arlene Plimpton, but you were born Beatrix Kiddo. And every morning when you woke up, you'd still be Beatrix Kiddo. A natural born killer. You always have been, and you always will be. Working in a used record store, going to the movies with Tommy, that's you. Trying to disguise yourself as a worker bee. But you're not a worker bee. You're a renegade killer bee. And that's all you'll ever be. 
First question. Did you really think your life in El Paso was going to work? No. Mm -hmm. But I would have had baby. I think you would have been a wonderful mother. But you are a killer. All those people you killed to get to me felt damn good, didn't they? Yes. Now comes the $64,000 question. Why did you run away from me with my baby? Do you remember the last assignment you sent me on? Lisa Wong. The morning I left, I was sick. On a plane, I threw up. So I started thinking, maybe I was pregnant. Easy to use. Remove cap and urinate on the absorbent end. She looks so different. Seconds. Accurate results in only 90 seconds. You can oh, read the results as soon as huh? in the window. That's quick, 90 seconds. That was you like four years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Getting some boobs for the first time. <laughs> With me in L.A., it didn't take Lisa Wong long to send an assassin of her own. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Karen Kim. I'm the hospitality manager of the hotel. I have a welcome gift from the management. Well, that's nice. Um, <laughs> can you just leave it by the door? Oh, uh... You can't trust nobody. I could blow your f head off. Not before I put one right between your eyes. So let's talk. I just found out right now, not a moment before you blew a hole through the door, <laughs> that I'm pregnant. What is this? On the floor by the door is a strip that says I'm pregnant. Bullshit. This time. You're a hundred percent wrong. You could have said Wong right there. Just look at the strip. Please. No, you could have said Wong right there. Stay I got canceled. where you are and don't move. I think it's nice that she cares about it, though. I don't know what this f means. The box with the directions <laughs> is right there. Easy to use. <laughs> <laughs> the cap. Blue means pregnant. I'll read it myself, thank you. <laughs> she don't trust her. <laughs> she don't trust her, but okay. she's looking away. Say I were to believe you, what then? Just go home. I'll do the same. Congratulations. Before that strip turned blue, I was a woman, I was your woman. Before that strip turned blue, I would have jumped a motorcycle onto a speeding train for you. But once that strip turned blue, I could no longer do any of those things because I was going to be a mother. I love that. Can you understand that? Yes. But well, why didn't you tell me then instead of now? Once you knew you'd claim her. Not your decision to make. Yes, but it's the right decision and I made it for my daughter. Yeah, I agree. You. She would have been born into a world she shouldn't have. I had to choose. I chose her. Five years ago, if I had to make a list of impossible things that could never happen, you performing a coup de grace on me would have been right at the top of the list. Of impossible things that could never happen, yes, in this instance, you would have been wrong. When you never came back, I naturally assumed Lisa Wong had killed you. Oh, and for the record, letting somebody think somebody they love is dead when they're not is quite cruel. Man, we ain't trying to hear it. <laughs> I mourned you for three months. I tracked you down. I wasn't trying to track you down. I was trying to track down the souls I thought killed The vulgar jerks. <laughs> so I find you. And what do I find? Not only are you not dead, you're getting married to some jerk. Guys, just, I'm sorry to interrupt it, but man, just for the last time, let me know why the heck is this thing sitting here censoring the subtitles? I guess censoring the cuss words. Just sitting here trying to tell me it's saying things it's not saying. Like, what's up with that? I overreacted. You overreacted? Is that your explanation? No, I didn't say I was going to explain myself. <laughs> I said I was going to tell you the truth. I'm a killer. I'm a murdering bastard. You know that? And there are consequences to breaking the heart of a murdering bastard. Was my reaction really that surprising? Yes, it was. But I never thought you would or could do that to me. 
Well, you're with another dude, but so. Mm -hmm. You and I have unfinished business. Baby, you ain't kidding. Oh, Whoa, they're sitting down fighting. Oh. Oh. oh, she got him with it. That thing? Yeah, the five fingered tip. The Pei Mei? The Mei Pei? Death thing, yeah. Say the name of it again. Man, I gotta learn that thing. I'm gonna do it to you when you're getting on my nerves. But whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Pai Mei taught you the Pai five point palm exploding heart technique. Five point palm exploding heart. Is that hearts exploding? Of course he did. Why didn't you tell me? I don't know. Because I'm a bad person. No. You're not a bad person. You're a terrific person. You're my favorite. But every once in a while, it can be a real a sour head. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. How do I look? You look ready. What? I mean, the afterlife? It's crazy, man. What a weird relationship they had. It was almost beautiful in a way, wasn't it? It was the it was craziest. Different. One of the craziest. You ain't got no exes like that, do you? Okay, I'm <laughs> just making sure. No assassins in the in the lineup. Yeah, I'll have to hit you with that. <laughs> the, the nipple pinch? <laughs> the five finger nipple pinch? <laughs> <laughs> Two, three. <laughs> Bruh. Kill Bill, check. And she was almost sad too. He didn't give her no sympathy. He was like, bah, bah. She's like, it's your. That little girl is so confused. Well, well, well. If it ain't the little flower. <laughs> <laughs> Good. She's watching some cartoons. Right. She ain't watching damn Sons of Anarchy or something. <laughs> I know, I know a lady whose daughter was five and she was watching Sons of Anarchy. I can't say why, man, because it'll spoil it for Mrs. October. That gave me Breaking Bad vibes. If you guys know, you know. Oh, because like the, the Spanish music? Uh, no. Oh. Aww. And all is no, right. No, not because of the Spanish jungle. music. You, you're not going to know why. You're not going to know why. Yeah, because we watched like the first season or so, but it ain't nothing in that. Yeah, and they were like singing that song. They were like, he's got the blue stuff. And Sorry, the reason I was like, shh, is because I was scared you were going to spoil. I didn't want you to say anything. Because you know, people would be like, spoilers. Yeah, don't say that. Well, how do I know? Man, this movie went crazy, guys. Five, six, seven, eight. Charlie Brown. She was a minor. <laughs> I wonder how people took this movie when it came out. Like, I wonder what people thought. I don't I, really know I, what I films were like I don't even like know what I time. think about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm right. still sitting here like wondering. Like I've seen some crazy stuff in my day and this threw me off. But back then, you know, it was a lot more rare to see stuff like this, I'd imagine. Right, if you just want to put it into words though, I would say it's, it's probably like just a story about being a mom. Kinda. Tori Hanzo. The man. Absolutely. Every time I see a katana for the rest of my life, I'm going to wonder if it's a, a Tori Hanzo. I bet everyone who's seen this thinks Wonders that. that. Yeah, yeah, everybody. <laughs> like in my head, I'm going to be like, look at that Hattori over there. Look at that Hanzo. Ooh, look at that Hanzo. <laughs> Ooh. I knew it was him. Who? That was Samuel L. I just, he, they were doing a good job of not showing oh, his face. Yeah, I thought it was Yeah. Too. I didn't want to get hit with the all white people don't look the same thing. Yeah, but they were doing a good job hiding it was yeah, him. Yeah, so I just didn't say nothing. But I thought it was him too because the way he sounded. He did her wrong. That was the only friend she made in the whole thing. <laughs> oh, she's wearing the necklace. That girl's going to grow up and be twisted though. Look at her. Just her sitting Honda. right next yeah, to the Honda. Saying. She's going to have room. Look. Did you put the Honda in the Honda? Oh, aka mommy. 
Based on the character of the bride created by Q and U. Guys, please let us know what is that and who's Quentin the character. And Uma. Oh. They wrote it together. Yeah, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> Edit that out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I almost made it through the whole movie without saying something really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think the most iconic part was? Guys, so let us know below what's the most iconic part of the Kill Bills in the 2000s. Because I'll tell you what I think. Is she just about to rise this whole time? I mean, I, you know, I'm down to watch her do it, but. Because she's not like really driving, right? Right now? Like the person who's filming it, she's not really driving. Most of the time they're not, but you know what, man? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Obviously, but I'm just saying, no, obviously, but I'm just saying most of the time they're not, but every once right. in a while they will. And this one, though, hell no. <laughs> She's sitting in one of them toy cars in front of a movie theater screen. Like they were sitting in on Pulp Fiction. Eating. Oh, yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> I don't know what she's singing about. So you think they got the full on fan right here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, keep your eye on the dot on the wall. <laughs> Now I know why Fall Out Boy wrote a song about you, Uma Thurman. Did they really? What yes. song? It's called Uma Thurman. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I've never heard it, and I'm going to continue to do that. <laughs> I don't do no Fall Out Boy, just so y'all know. Guys, that was a lot of fun, man. That was Kill Bill. I would say that was Kill Bill Volume 2, but uh, in reality, man, that was just Kill Bill. Uh, we essentially watched them back to back in a way. Um, we didn't really watch them back to back. We just watched the extended version. If you watch Kill Bill, you got to watch them back to back. It yeah. should have been like one movie. Right. I, right. I just feel like that was like the extension of Kill Bill 1. Yeah, exactly. It was just like all went together. So, baby, what did you think about that movie? Jeez. I thought like, jeez. Are you lost for words? Yeah, it was, that was good. It was great it? because it was a story about a mother trying to get to her daughter, essentially, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Maybe if she knew her daughter was alive, I'm not really that was sure. one of the damn storylines for sure. <laughs> but like all in between was nuts. Like she had to go, she had to take out the whole crew who was like, I guess her assassin friends, so to say. Everyone they all she had knew, snake names. Everyone that she knew was basically had ties to being an assassin, basically. Yeah. Because once you join Assassin's Club, you gotta wipe And they worked clean. for Bill. Bill was in charge, obviously, because his um name was the snake snake charmer. Yeah. So all the snakes work for him. And then they kill her because they they're so close with Bill and she breaks Bill's heart. So, guys, I did pull up the characters in the movie just so that way I can get references, because some of these names are a little strange, you know, but um, a little hard to remember. But I thought one of the coolest parts in the movie, you, you said in the movie what was one of the most iconic parts to kill Bill. So Pai Mei was the coolest character. I love the way he was grabbing his beard. You know, it was such like a stereotype of a thing in a way like master roshi does that junk on like dragon ball z and stuff and it just makes me wonder like did they do that on dragon ball z because of this or which one even came out first i'm not really sure but i thought his character was absolutely phenomenal i thought that it really did capture this anime feel of just like capturing that culture and i don't really know how to put my tongue on exactly why it worked so well but something about it just really was like charming and it just really worked like you really believed it i guess i don't know but i thought that was the most iconic part obviously learning about the the i'm gonna mess the name up obviously but the five finger not the damn five finger death punch but you guys know what i'm saying i feel like the five bruh, do y'all think that the five finger death punch y'all think that guy stole it from this movie because i'm starting to realize when i watch these movies i'm getting a lot of references from like culture and i'm having right. a lot of thoughts like that but that part was iconic and to me the iconic part was the trailer standoff between her and l driver that was like when they were yeah. with the swords like looking at each other that was probably the best scene for you, sure. th you think so? I really I think like that, that whole fighting scene. In the trailer scene, yeah. was probably the best. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought it was absolutely tough, man. How she just took her eye and then left her to get bit by the mamba. Mm -hmm. I insane. think it's crazy that she like was. It was you know how we watch everything everywhere all at once, and mm -hmm. there's moments that you have to like make up for bigger moments in your life. Yeah. Well, I felt like her training with Pi May that little that little this punch, the quick punch. Right. It like translated into like uh, something she really needed in the future. Right. Well. Even the driver's smart little mouth ended up costing her. Yeah. Like, that's what I mean. Like, everyone essentially was who they were by the end of the movie. You know, all the characters stayed true to who they were. And it either worked out or it didn't. You know, even, like, the bouncer guy. Like, it just, it just really reminds me of a Quentin Tarantino movie. Because... Sending that guy, I don't remember his name, but sending him to the club, the guy who was a bouncer, like to sending him there. Like there yeah. was really no point of that. They could have left it out, but it really reminded me of so many scenes in these Quentin Tarantino movies that were. It's seeing. just like it's get just, to know the character a little better before I kill him off real quick. Well, in my <laughs> mind, I'm thinking like when he got killed, I'm thinking like 
so it sucks that he got killed and all, but now I'm actually stressed significantly more because now I know that he's got a job and when the dude calls, he ain't going to answer. Well, no, he's already he's off the no schedule, call, no so it was fine. But he said you're on call. <laughs> Yeah. But now he's on call, but he ain't going to answer. So I'm yeah. just like, somebody's got to cover for that, brother. Right. So it's kind of got me stressed out because employment is hard to come by these days. But I was thinking when he died, I was like, it's good. He's not on the schedule this week. <laughs> you know, my thing is, bro, how did she just stack the money on top of the snake? And then the, the snake was just chilling, remember? Yeah. But anyways, that's besides the point. Maybe Bill trains him because he's a snake charmer. What, train the snake? Yeah, maybe he's like. The snake Only bite one in the bushes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Bill was a real son of a bitch in this. He was <laughs> he was one of the scariest characters we've seen, man. It was like, crazy because I'm not even trying to sound like like Bill like anything like that, but Bill kind of had like a lisp kind of to me. And he was like a villain. Oh, he had a whispering cowboy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was it. Right. And it was like, you know, most time when you hear that voice, it's not very like scary. A voice like Bill's isn't very scary to me, but Bill had a good way of being a villain without being like a harsh villain. And he was creepy. Yeah, you're right. He yeah. was he was the soft. He played the role of like a soft spoken assassin, basically. Right. And a master yeah. manipulator, too, because he's sitting there talking to her and, you know, throwing BB in it. Like, isn't mommy so pretty? I love so that pretty? word that you use exactly like. You hit the nail on the head. A master manipulator. He manipulated his daughter so well that mom shows up after four years in a coma. And she's so manipulated to think that that's just normal. Mm -hmm. And she was just playing the role at the time. So Bill was a weird character, man. He was weird. He was creepy. He was stalkerish. He was controlling, manipulative. He was everything. I mean, he was everything. But to him, so. he was just heartbroken. Right. Like yeah. all, like... Yeah. All of that because he because she broke a murdering bastard's heart. Well, that's she, crazy. She did leave him for a buster, though. Let's be real. Uh, <laughs> no, she left him for a nickelbacker. <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey, 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 <laughs> black deuce. Yeah, I thought the movie was phenomenal, man. I, and, you know, there's some people out there who are probably thinking like phenomenal because you just ran around and murdered people the whole time. And it's one of those things. If you just haven't watched the movie all the way through, then I just don't really know how you could appreciate it. But me personally, I'm just really struggling to like, you know, exactly put my hand on what I just saw or why it was so relevant and impactful. And ultimately, why so many people love Quentin Tarantino and why right. he gets the green light to keep making these banger movies. So I just thought it was good because the scenery that they choose to use, the contrast between the blacks and the whites, uh, just how they try to portray the emotion and stuff by using the different color lights and stuff. It was just interesting. I think if I altogether. made a movie, dude, if I made a movie, I know for a fact it would not come out like Quentin Tarantino's. No. I just don't have the mind for it. So this was the most unique to me out of all the ones we've seen so far. Like it was far because, unique, yeah. because it just had different elements. It had an anime, sorry, an anime scene. It had really, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> it had really good fighting scenes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love you, baby. I love Sorry. you so much. <laughs> she really mean, is my best friend, guys. I don't mean to do that to you. But anyways, it had really good fighting. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> anyways, it had a little anime in it is what you're trying to say. No, it had really good fighting scenes. That's what yeah, I Yeah, the fighting scenes were so and I guess the thing that really sold this movie to me was like Pulp Fiction was funny, but it was funny in a sense of like I laughed because they said the MF word a lot. Like so I was just like by default laughing because when I hear that word, I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, there was something about this movie that was this movie was not scared to be corny, right? This movie was totally OK with being corny. I feel like it embraced it. It really embraced, like I said, man, just like this, this nerdy feel, you know, because violence and action and assassins and mobsters and gangsters, all that is it, there. You know, it's all the market's been cornered, right? The market's been cornered by like these tough dudes, right? But in this in this movie, it was just a bunch of girls and a bunch of like like an older guy. And I think that's funny. And they was just not scared to be like cliche and funny. Right. And I think in a way it just really made it work. Yeah. You know, because if you watch something that takes itself too serious, there's a fine line between right. trying to be realistic and being boring. And, and they you know? did that kind of along with what you're saying, the foreshadowing in it. Cause you know, the Eagle claw and she ends up poking the girl's yeah, eye. Like, I like how they chose <laughs> to not show her practicing all this stuff. Yeah. So we could forget about that thing at the end, yes. this thing, and we could forget about it. And then it could, you know, happen at the end Sorry, and I shock us, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I really like that. And I also like that we didn't get to know that he actually liked her so much that he taught her that. Yeah. Cause all we saw was their like banter. 
Well, he liked her because she was all the things. She, she literally was everything that he hated, but then he proved her wrong. So I think he had like a certain affection for her. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he hated white he hated people, women, ass. and Americans, right? <laughs> yeah. And then he really made an impression. So I think on some level, maybe it like, maybe it was the first time in a long time, maybe he learned a little something, mm-hmm. you know? And so maybe he. But you know. I like that the way Quentin Tarantino does it is we don't get to see that part. We just know, like, we get to take that. Like, we get to make up our own, how do they learn that, whatever. Right. Yeah, man. Quentin, if you're watching this, which you're absolutely not, <laughs> your movies are going absolutely crazy so far. And I, I'm kind of disappointed in you, dog. Like, you need to make more movies, because apparently there's, like, five left, you know? And I'm telling you guys what, these movies, it's not that these are the best movies ever made or nothing, because they're not, right? They're not the best movies ever made, but they're really, really good. But they are so unique. And I, not only that, they're they're not really new to you, but they're new to me, so... They're just so unique to us that I, I really look forward to watching these. Baby, what's your favorite movie so far? Is it still Kill Bill? I, 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 I want to put Kill Bill into one. I don't want to say volume one or volume two is yeah, it's separate. One movie. It's one movie. I feel like, cool, but these movies right here were so good to me. And if the next ones continue down this path, oh my gosh. I love the timing. Like I like at the beginning, we like knew she was going to go kill Bill. So we knew she killed those other people, but I, I still, still was wasn't sure if she I was going to do yeah. it. Yeah. When she got buried, I'm like, how? How, how yeah. is she going to go kill Bill? Like, Well, when you said something about her punching her way out, I was thinking I was, I was thinking that, but I just thought like that would be ridiculous. But right. then I remembered like we're watching Kill Bill. The movie's slightly funny. Like, And also we have to get to Bill somehow. So how is she going to do it? That's, That's guess, the cool part. We knew she was going to get out of those situations. We just, they were seemed impossible. I'll put it this way, man. Like ultimately when you watch a movie, I'll be honest with you guys, man. I've watched movies where 12 hours later, I don't remember anything. I don't remember a scene I saw. But with these Quentin Tarantino movies, I feel like individually, there's probably about 15 scenes per movie that I'm just never going to forget. Right. I'm never going to forget forget. Bill playing that little thing. Billy Ray Bill. Yeah, because because there was times in the movie where like that little tune would have went perfect. And I was looking for it and I was looking for it, but he wasn't there to play it. Yeah. But it, it was good. Yeah, you know, like some some people, they they speak slow because they feel like when they talk, they actually want you to listen because they feel like what they have to say is important. And then it's sort of up to you to decide if it is. But that's how Quentin Tarantino movies are. They're like slow burns. They don't get ahead of them. They don't get ahead of themselves. They don't stumble on their words. They're very confident. He's a very confident director. Why do you, you can tell if a director is confident. Why do you think he chooses to put things in and not? Like, for example, her name, was it because... He was calling her kiddo. Well, I, I'll, dude, it might be as simple as if you just don't put her name in, then it just, once you know her name, then it humanizes her, you know, and he don't want you to do that. And then it could be as simple as if we just don't tell you her damn name, then, and then you got to watch the next movie to figure out her name. It could be oh. that simple. You know, I could be like, hey guys, my name is, you know what? I'm not going to tell you. Just keep watching. Eventually you'll find out. Because I was thinking because he kept calling her kiddo and that's like her last name. So if you first watch this, you could maybe think, oh, that could be her dad because he's saying kiddo. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing I have for it. But I really like when he does that because I don't know what's in that briefcase on Pulp Fiction. And there's something we don't know from Reservoir Dogs, I forgot. But then this one, we just don't know why they left it out the whole first movie. It's just another way to just and that's that was that was my whole thing. That's why I didn't think that we needed the subtitles in the first movie. Like in Pulp Fiction, they never told us was was what was in the briefcase, even though. So many people's told us that it was actually oh, Marcellus's soul. Oh, it was Jackie Brown, the other thing. Right. Yeah. Even though they said it was Marcellus's soul and yeah. they were sent to get a soul back and all this stuff. So that's the whole theory that I actually kind of like. But uh, he just leaves a lot for interpretation. He really respects the audience in that way to just let them make their own decisions. So I like that I like because that. then everyone kind of gets their own relationship to the movie because they have their own ideas. I got my own damn relationship to the first movie because I watched it in a whole different way than y'all did. I'll put it that way. <laughs> I made up this whole storyline. So, <laughs> um, Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. These movies genuinely were were so much fun. Uh, Quentin Tarantino movies, action movies, it's not really exactly our genre, I would say. YouTube right. sort of has this thing, man. YouTube always tries to put you in a box, you know, so we do really good with like superhero stuff. If we put something superhero related out, YouTube will definitely try to make it go crazy for us. And Beatrix Kiddo is a superhero. I don't care what y'all say. But at the end of the day, when it comes to movies like this, the classics and stuff, we're not really into the system that good yet. So we don't really, you know, we don't really do as well in these videos. So I I personally really love these movies, though, man. I want to continue to watch like classic Americana movies, classic movies that everyone should just understand, you know, for the culture and stuff. So I just want to get into more movies like this, man. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit us up on Patreon. 
and just support the video, man, because we really, really want to dive into these. We're up next cause... with Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. So if you guys want to tune into that, man, turn on the notifications. That's going to be coming soon. And, and I say it, man, I'm telling you all the truth. I cannot wait to get into Quentin Tarantino. So we're probably going to watch that literally ASAP, probably in a couple of days. We got some stuff we need to watch, but Inglorious Bastards is next. Are we even going to be able to put the title of that on YouTube without getting an ad suitability? Because we didn't in Game of Thrones. Maybe we should call it Inglorious B Words. <laughs> but then all the. <laughs> All the ladies might get mad. Inglorious bees. Inglorious bitches. All right. Sorry for cussing, man. I'll see y'all on the next one.